at you. I want to show you the way to miracles. I want to show you the way to God. God does not deal with hypocrisy. He doesn't want a song and dance from you. He doesn't want that. He wants you to be real from your heart. And if you're dying when you get up in the morning, don't say, oh, God, everything is so beautiful. Stop it. You say, God, I'm dying. How about it? I'm dying. <laughs> be real with God. Amen? Amen? That's when he responds. That's why the Bible says, draw near to me, O man, and I will draw near to you. Amen? Amen? That's what that means. You draw near to God by honesty. He speaks the language of honesty. Amen. And so, beloved, I'm going to end right about there. Is that all right? I have about 25 more pages in my homily and 15 more miracles. How much time do you have? I can keep going, but I might get in trouble from Father Michael. So I better stop right now. But, beloved, are you in love with God? Yes. I'm in love, too. Are, are we in love with God? Yes. This is the core of the Roman Catholic faith. It's not keeping rules and regulations. They're fine where they belong. It is loving God with all your soul. I mean all of it. Willing to die. Lord, if I'm going to die for you tonight, I will die for you. Amen? Yes. Open your heart, not your garment, today. And God will come down and heal you and you will see wonders you've never seen before. Amen? Amen. Alleluia. It's Lent, you're not supposed to say hallelujah. <laughs> I was just testing you. You're excused, though. You're excused. Amen? Amen. And so, beloved, I'm going to finish with that. I always like to go to Mary, because she's the mother of the Eucharist. She's the mother of Corpus Christi, and she is the mother of our joy. If you entrust this to Mama tonight, you say, Mama, help me to rip open my heart. We we'll say it after me. Say, Mama, Mama. help me to be real with God. Help me to pray like a saint. Rip open my heart that God may draw near. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. 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 O oh, Jesus, then today, amen? amen. Not just in the Ukraine. Give them the Holy Spirit. I bless, I bless them forever. Amen. Amen. How does that feel? Christian prayer is right here to surrender it to God. Amen. Amen. We're supposed to say it ten times in a row each night. We just did day one. Now we're going to do the prayer. I'm going to say the first half ten times. Beloved, if you would answer, I'm going to say, Oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you, and you would please answer. Take care of everything. Let go of everything, whatever it is, let go of it. Amen? Amen? Let go of it into God's hands. Whatever healing you need, let him take care of it. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Oh, Jesus. I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Oh, 
Jesus, I surrender myself to you. O oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. O oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. This novena, beloved, is the only one I've ever used in my entire life that has always worked. I've used all of them. This is the only one I've used as a layman and as a priest that has worked every single time. This one. So this, beloved, is invaluable. Amen? Amen. Whatever you need in the future, and beloved, dark times are coming. Whatever you need, you pray this novena, and God will provide it for you right in your living room. Amen? Amen. So this is a keeper. We're going to look at now at the second handout, beloved. You have a second one called Complete Forgiveness. It's in English on one side and Spanish on the other. Complete Forgiveness. For you, of course, to take home and finish this at home. But this is the Holy Spirit formula for forgiving anyone who's hurt you in your life, especially bad, painful betrayals. This is a formula to forgive anyone who's hurt you. You want to try to do that tonight real quickly right now. Why? Because when I hate somebody and I don't forgive them, then it blocks my own healing. Amen? So this is how we forgive someone completely, even for terrible things like murder and rape and molestation, betrayal, even for things like that, this will give you and I the grace to forgive utterly and totally and forever. Amen? Amen. It's very simple, but the very first step is you and I need to make a decision. We can't wait on our feelings, so I feel like doing it. You'll never feel like doing it. You make a decision. Let's say your husband or your wife divorced you unjustly. You say, in the name of Jesus, I decide tonight, I forgive my spouse forever. Amen? Amen. It's a decision, first of all. Love is a decision. And forgiveness is love. Amen? Amen? And so your first open door to forgiveness, beloved, is to make a decision. And you see there in printed in bold print under step one, I forgive you, let's say Uncle Joe, I forgive you, Uncle Joe, in the name of Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen? Amen. I won't go on much longer on this handout, but I will go to step two. This is where most Catholics never forgive properly. They say, Father, I forgave my mother-in-law, and I still hate her. (laughs) You hear this about once every other day. That's because you forgot to bless her. Bless her? Yes, bless her. The Bible says, return a blessing for a curse. Amen? So if you've been cursed by somebody in your life, and cursing can come by betrayal. I don't mean like necessarily saying a dirty word. Let's say somebody stole your money. Uh, We're helping a family. They stole like $400,000, a family member from another family member. $400,000. That also is a type of a curse. You forgive and you bless the one who hurt you. Amen? Amen? And so you would say, I bless you, Uncle Joe, richly in the name of Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen? For no matter what it might be, even murder, I forgive you, the one who murdered my cousin, in the name of Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen? Amen. We have to bless the ones who hurt us. Amen? Amen? That's what the Lord did from the cross. That separates a true Catholic from an artificial Catholic. Amen? Amen. You try it now. Would you say this after me? Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I, hereby tonight I hereby tonight bless my enemies. Forgive them, Jesus, Jesus. and give them the Holy Spirit. Spirit. I bless them forever. forever. 
Amen. Amen. How does that feel? You look more handsome. Whenever you do that, you start becoming more beautiful. Isn't it true? That's the second step. You'll see the other ones there of praising and thanksgiving. This is the method to forgive anybody of anything forever. Amen? Amen. Now you receive, beloved, a small or a half sheet, the prayer for peace to Mary, the light of hope. It's like a half handout written by Pope John Paul. And you might remember this prayer when he was still with us. Of course, he is still with us spiritually. He's right here in the church with us tonight. A prayer that he wrote. We want to say this prayer right now because never has the world needed peace more than today. Amen? Amen. Not just in the Ukraine, not just Russia, but also even in Washington, D.C. and in Tallahassee. Amen? Amen? So let's say this holy prayer that John Paul wrote for you and I is even more prescient it's more appropriate today. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All together, Immaculate Heart of Mary, help us to conquer the menace of evil, which so easily takes root in the hearts of the people of today, and whose immeasurable effects already weigh down upon our modern world and seem to block the path toward the future. From famine and war, from nuclear war, from incalculable self-destruction, from every kind of war, from sins against human life, from its very beginning, from hatred, and from the demeaning of the dignity of the children of God. From every kind of injustice in the life of society, both national and international. From readiness to trample on the commandments of God. From attempts to stifle in human hearts the very truth of God from the loss of awareness of good and evil, from sins against the Holy Spirit, accept, O Mother of Christ, this cry laden with the sufferings of all individual human beings, laden with the sufferings of whole societies. Help us with the power of the Holy Spirit to conquer all sin, individual sin, and the sin of the world, sin in all of its manifestations, that there be revealed once more in the history of the world the infinite saving power of the redemption, the power of merciful love. May it put a stop to evil. May it transform consciences May your immaculate heart reveal for all the light of hope. Amen. Is that not a beautiful prayer? Beloved, consider taking a photograph of it on your phone and sending it to all your contacts, Catholic and non-Catholic. Amen? Amen? Now you have one more handout, the 15 promises of the Virgin Mary to those who pray the rosary. The rosary, beloved, is all-powerful, Mama said, whatever you ask will be given to you through the rosary. Padre Pio, whose robe is now open on the first table, Padre Pio said, the rosary is the weapon. Not a weapon, but the weapon. Amen? Amen. And so, beloved, if the churches close down again, and I'll try not to say much more than that tonight, if they shut down again, which is very possible, pray your rosary ten times more. Amen? Amen? Our Lady said she will come into your house if the churches are shut down again, and she will bring the Eucharistic presence of Jesus with her into your house. We will receive Holy Communion spiritually and mystically through the Virgin, the Mother of the Eucharist, through the rosary. Amen? 
So look at the 15 promises of the Virgin Mary. Look at number one. These were given to St. Dominic, by the way, many years ago, to St. Dominic. And they have the imprimatur of the Holy Catholic Church. Look at number one. Would you say that with me, brothers and sisters, number one? Whoever shall faithfully serve me by the recitation of the rosary shall receive signal graces. Now, a signal grace basically is a sign grace. That's like your house filling with the aroma of roses. When I open St. Padre Pio's robe in my cousin's house in Philadelphia, the scent of roses came into the house, all over the house. That's called a signal grace. God will give everyone who prays the rosary, even if you're a Muslim and you pray the rosary, you'll get signal graces. Amen? Amen. The Muslims love Our Lady, by the way. They love the Virgin. The rosary has every possible grace in it, and the only way that nuclear war will be stopped will be through the rosary. Amen? Amen. Now, if you jump down here, beloved, my favorite one is number 11. Let's read out promise number 11 right now. You shall obtain all you ask of me by the recitation of the rosary. That's pretty clear, isn't it? Of course, you have to pray from your heart. Amen? To rip your heart open with your rosary. Rip your heart open and pray from the bottom of your heart. Amen? So what I'm going to do in just a moment, I'm going to place the Lord Jesus Christ, blessed be his name, on the altar. And I'm going to ask you to pray a decade of the rosary with me for your healing. We're going to ask Mama to ask Jesus to give you a miracle tonight. Amen? Amen. We're going to pray one decade for that. So before I start, just so you know, because I don't want to talk too much when the Lord is on the altar, when you come up for your healing... Deacon Frank is going to give you a healing scapular from the Virgin Mary. If you've already been blessed, one healing scapular will hand to you. Then, beloved, you'll come to the other relics here. And the first one on the small table is the actual robe that Padre Pio wore. I can tell you my hand always begins to tingle when I touch it with the Holy Spirit. This is the actual robe of Padre Pio. And you'll come up and you can place one or both of your hands on it with the green scapular that Deacon Frank will give you. That way your scapular becomes a relic. I hold this every day. I must be an old relic myself. <laughs> I've been told that a few times. So you'll come up and touch Padre Pio's robe with your hand and your scapular. Then you'll come to the second relic. And this is actually a first-class relic. What does that mean, first class? It's his body. A piece of his bone is here. This is St. Charbel the great mystic from Lebanon. His body is still incorrupt like hundreds of years later and exudes oil every day. His body is unbelievable. He has as many miracles as Padre Pio. He's called the Padre Pio of the East. Today, you have both Padre Pios with you. Amen? You must be favored and loved by God. Amen? I think he's getting you ready for something. You're going to be so ready, you're going to be saint for whatever's coming. Amen? Amen. You're going to be the advanced shock troops to bring the victory to Florida. Amen? Amen? So the bone of Padre Pio is here, the bone. And I'll place, there's actually a crucifix in here as well, just so you know. And it's special because it came from the Vatican, and the crucifix was touched to the blood of John Paul. That's in here as well. That's the second one. There's a sign. Then the third one here is another first-class relic, and this is, what is a first-class relic? It's part of the body. This is the bone of Pope St. Pius X. And you know, I get the anointing, you know what I'm trying to say, all over my arm, the electricity all over. He was the Pope who had a healing ministry. As Pope, he would pray over you, you'd be healed when he was Pope. Like the first Pope, Simon Peter, Amen. I think every pope should have the healing ministry. Amen? Amen. When I get there, remind me, okay? <laughs> every pope should have a healing ministry. So this is St. Pope Pius X. Part of his bone is here. There's even the papers from the Vatican inside the pouch. We won't open the pouch for safety reasons, but touch the pouch with your hand and your scapular. And lastly, we have another first-class relic. 
This is the blood of St. Hannibal. Have you heard of the servant of God, Luisa Picaretta? This is her spiritual director. This is St. Hannibal, or in, I think in Italian they say St. Anaboli, or Anaboli. They pronounce it differently in Italy. They spell it differently with an A, Anaboli. But in English, it's Hannibal. He was canonized by John Paul. And I'll tell you one quick miracle before we start so you have some idea of how powerful these relics are. I first received this relic in California from a very holy nun. She was a superior in the order of the Daughters of Divine Zeal. That order was started by St. Annabelle. I met them in California, and I blessed their school and their church because they were having problems. So I did an exorcism of the whole school and the convent and the church. When I was all done, the sisters thanked me and said, Father, come join us for dinner. And I went into the convent with the sisters, and there's a statue of St. Annabelle. And I know him. I said, whoa, there's St. Annabelle. She says, Father, that's our founder. I didn't realize that. And she said to me, Father, would you like a first-class relic of our founder? So all the, all the superiors across the world received four first-class relics each across the world after his canonization. She gave me one of her four. The next day, to show you God, how God works in his timing, see, you're here tonight for a reason. It's not an accident. The next day I was giving a retreat in another part of California. I had this in my pocket. After Holy Mass... I went walking from the church to the conference hall to give a talk. I had like, you know, 15 seconds to get from here to there. The man stopped me in the hallway. He was my server, my acolyte, a grown man, a very good server. And his name was Michael, too. And he, he stopped me. He said, Father. And I said, yes. Father, please, I'm having open heart surgery next Friday. Could you please pray for me for my healing? And I thought, oh, no, I have no time. I got to go. But I can't say that, you know what I mean? I can't say that. They're all waiting for me, but I couldn't say no. So that what can I do? And he hit me, you have a first-class relic in your pocket, you dodo. <laughs> so I reached in my pocket and took it out, as they gave it to me. And I said, here, let me put this on your chest. He's having triple bypass surgery the following Friday. I put this on his chest. As soon as I put the relic on the gentleman's chest, his chest literally thumped almost out of his chest, his heart, four times. And I mean, my, my hand moved. Boom, 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 boom. My hand moved four times. His chest pulled. Boom, 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 boom. I looked at him. He looked at me. And I said, did you feel that? He said, Father, it feels like a locomotive. I said, you've just been healed. I'll see you later. And I ran off. <laughs> That's exactly what I said to him. I ran off. I said, you've just been healed. I knew it. I could feel it. He called me a week later from California. I was back in my headquarters in Georgia. He called me. He said, Father, I just got back from the doctor. I said, tell me. He says, well, we had the CAT scan on Thursday night to locate exactly where the doctor was to cut him for the surgery on Friday. Father, he said, the doctor came out and he turned the color like white. He was shaking, he was pale. And he said to me, I don't know how to explain this to you. And my friend said, what? What do you see? He said, there's no scar tissue at all on your heart. You have the heart of a teenage boy. <laughs> Amen. Amen. His surgery was canceled, by the way. Now, why don't we give the Lord an applause, but let's, let's applause him for your miracle in advance. That's faith, amen? amen. You say, oh, no, I'm going to wait till he does it. No. No, no, no. You have faith first, then you get the miracle. You, see? you say, oh, no, I'm with the miracle first, then I have faith. Uh-uh, it doesn't work. You have to have faith first. Amen? Amen? Now, let's give him an applause for the miracle you're about to receive, okay?
Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. For he alone is worthy, for he alone is worthy, for he alone is worthy, Christ the Lord. And let's sing this new line, because it's so appropriate. For he will save our nation. 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 We love you, Jesus. 